at his feet. Yeah. Hallelujah. In this sanctuary.
Thank you, Jesus. We just raise a hand and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let your word be accomplished in my life. I say, and so be it, God. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for talking. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for reassuring us and reminding us. God, you're so good. I praise you today. I love you, Lord. I magnify you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, there's none like you. There's none beside you, God. I thank you, Jesus. Amen. Sometimes we get so worked up about life and the things around us when it's not going the way we thought it would. We need to trust him. My friend, we need to trust him. Trust him in everything that we do. Because my God's not going to let you down. 
Amen. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, God, today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord on this Sunday night. Amen. He's an awesome God. If you'll turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 6 in your Bible. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse number 24. And it came to pass after this that Ben-Hadadad, the king of Syria, gathered all his host and went up and besieged Samaria. They surrounded it. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until an ass's head was sold for four, four score pieces of silver and a fourth part of a cab of dung's dug, a dung, dove's dung for five pieces of silver. Wow. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, their walls were wide enough they could walk on, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help, my lord, O king. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, whence shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor and out of the wine press? The king said, I don't have any power to help you if God's not going to help you. I'm going to skip down to chapter 7, verse number 1. And the Bible says, And Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. For thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. He said, hear the word of the Lord. Help is on the way. God's going to change something in the next 24 hours. And things are going to be back the way they used to be as far as commerce, how much things cost. That's what I want to preach to us tonight. Hear the word of the Lord. Help is on the way. Let's pray and let's ask God to help us to receive his word tonight. Jesus, we pray that you would just give us hearts to receive, ears to hear, and help us to mix the word with faith that it might profit us tonight. Don't let it just be idle words, God, but let it be directly to our, our need, our spirit, and help it, Lord Jesus, be planted deep within us. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just move and minister in a special way in the next few minutes, and we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name. And everyone say amen. amen. Tell your neighbor, hear the Lord. You may be seated. Desperate times call for desperate measures. You've heard of the stories of when a car maybe has fallen um, off a jack and it's crushing somebody. And an mi individual, a man that normally is not no way able to pick up a car because of the adrenaline that's going through the moment and the need that is there, that if they don't get the vehicle off of the person, they're going to die. They're able to lift the vehicle through their own strength with the abilities of, the, of all the adrenaline that's rushing and really the help of the Lord because desperate times call for desperate measures. The man normally wouldn't even attempt to pick the car up. Well, my friend, there was a need. And so when there's a need, there's an effort. I need to say that again. When there's a need, there's an effort. You reach, you try, you do something. When a crisis comes, people, people do extraordinary things. Sometimes they, are, they act in historic, heroic ways, and sometimes... They do ignorant things. It's like, why did they do that? Because it was a crisis and they weren't thinking straight. They just reacted. They made a poor decision. And they did something dumb instead of something smart. And so sometimes pressure brings out the good. And sometimes pressure brings out the bad. 
But one thing we know for sure is when the pressure is turned up and we are squeezed, we find out what's on the inside. The inside. The way you find out what's inside of a tube is you squeeze it. And what is in the tube comes out when the pressure is applied to the outside. And my friend, we, we need to know what's inside. And so every once in a while, God puts a little squeeze on us. Every once in a while, God allows a little pressure. James puts it this way, that it's the trials and the tests that purify us. Amen. And we come out on the other side like gold that's tried in a fire. He said, don't think it's strange that you're going to go through a trial, a situation, even a fiery trial. Amen. Understand, it's God's plan to help us. He puts the squeeze on us every once in a while just to show us what's on the inside. You might not have meant to react like that in that situation. You might not have meant to be that angry or to say that type of thing. But you did. Why? Because it was what's on the inside at that moment. It reveals a little bit about what's on the heart. Jesus put it like this in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. He said, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh the abundance of the heart it's just the overflow when a little pressure's put on it comes out the mouth that's why i want to make sure that my mouth is speaking the things of god i want to make sure that i put the right things in so when the pressure comes the right things are going to come out you know, Job had the right things in. The Bible said Job was a perfect and an upright man. And when God allowed the test and the trial to come, and God allowed him to lose all that he had, and all those things happened, and he was squeezed, what did he say? He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Blessed when he gives, and blessed when he takes away. Amen. I'm not going to curse God and die. You're talking like a foolish woman. There's no way. Amen. Because he had the right thing on the inside when he was squeezed, when he felt the pressure no it wasn't pleasant it wasn't what he wanted it wasn't anything amen in his plan book that that he put down and said you know what i want to do go through a big crisis here in a little while it was none of that amen but it was the abundance of the heart it came out and he said i'm going to not curse god i'm going to bless god amen because god's been so good to me in times of crisis Reason is sometimes lost. Common sense can become rare when things are really bad. And the survival instinct kicks in. We just try to make sure we survive during a crisis. That's what was happening here in 2 Kings chapter number 6. The city was surrounded. The Syrian army, amen, had cut off all supplies. Food supplies had quickly been used up. And desperation began to set in. The king didn't know what to do. The men of the city didn't know what to do. There was no way for anybody to break the, 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 the siege of the Syrian army. And so they just waited it out and they survived. A woman sees the king going by on the, on the wall and cries out for help. He stops. And in verse 28... The king said unto her, What aileth thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son tomorrow. What? So we're going to eat one of our kids today, and then tomorrow we're going to eat the other kid. They were desperate. It's sad. The king couldn't believe it. The Bible says the king rent his clothes. He was upset. He put on sackcloth. He humbled himself before God. She said, verse 29, so we boiled my son. Can you believe that she's telling the king this? And did eat him. And I said unto her, the next day, give me thy thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. She's not upset that they ate her kid yesterday. She's upset that they can't eat the other kid today. 
I'm telling you, they were desperate. This is a sick situation. And when you look at some of the news reports today and the stuff that's going on in our world, there's a lot of desperate people that are off base, that don't know what to do and where to turn, and they're making terrible decisions. Amen. They are living in their sin and in the consequences of their sin, and they're hurting other people in the process. My friend, our world is in a crisis today. And if there ever was a time that we need to hear from God, it's now. We need to hear the word of the Lord. We need God to speak to us quickly. The Bible says in verse 30, And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes and passed by upon the wall. And the people looked, and behold, he had sackcloth upon his flesh. No longer did he wear the, ro the royal robes. No longer did they recognize him as the king. They recognized him as a man that was mourning because they had a bad situation that was going on. And it was terrible, and he didn't know what to do, and he humbled himself before God. Well, sort of. Because the next verse says, and he said, God do so and more also to me if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. He said, all this bad stuff's coming. You know what we're going to do? We're going to kill the man of God. Wait a second, king. Like I said, sometimes in desperate times, reason goes out the wall, the window, not the wall. People do dumb things when they're squeezed, when there's a crisis. So he wants to kill the man of God. But Elisha remains calm. Because he serves a God who can change any situation. Remember Elisha, the one that was called to follow and to serve Elijah. The one that saw the miracle, saw his, the chariot come by and pick up his servant. The one that came back to the Jordan and took the mantle and smote the water and it parted. And he walked across on dry ground. The one that, when the, the, the sons of the prophets, the kids came out and made fun of him. Amen. The Lord sent she-bears out of the woods and destroyed the kids. This is the man of God. All these things that are happening. And Elisha stays calm in the midst of the trouble. Elisha, the Bible says in verse 32, it says, Elisha sat in his house and the elders sat with him. And the king sent a man from before him. And before the messenger came to him, Elijah said to the elders, See, Ye, see ye how this is the son of a murderer has sent him to take away mine head. He said, the king wants to kill me. But he didn't run. He didn't hide. He didn't worry. Because he knew a higher power. Verse 33, and while he yet talked with them, behold, the messenger came unto him, and he said, behold, this evil is of the Lord. What should I wait for the Lord any longer? He told the messenger of the king, this came from God. God's putting the squeeze on you here. God is getting your attention. God wants you to know that you need to change your ways. How many times have we blamed things on the devil when it was really God allowing something to come into our life to get our attention? God getting us, to, getting us to reevaluate our priorities and get things back in order. And yet many times we get mad at God. We get mad at all these things. We blame other forces. Don't recognize that the hand of God is on our life right now. And God is trying to help us. And he's putting a little squeeze on us to show us what's on the inside. We see it in our world today. All these things that are going on, my friend, things are going to change so much. And God is orchestrating it all. Yes, the global bank systems, they, they think they're orchestrating it. And all these politicians and all these leaders around the world, they think they're organi organizing it. And all these ones behind the scenes that think that they're, they're in control and they're calling all these shots and they have these grandiose plans, they're not organizing anything that wasn't ordained by God. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. God owns the cattle on a thousand hills. 
God knows exactly what's going on. Amen. God lives in the future as well as living right now, as well as living in the past, because he fills all time and all space. That's something that just blows my mind every time I try to think about it for a little while. God right now at this current moment is sitting with Adam and Eve in the garden, and he's with us here today, and he's living a thousand years in the future. Nothing is surprising to God. We just understand that God fills all space, but God fills time too. God just allows us to fill one moment at a time as we go forward, but God fills it all at the same. That's how big our God is. He's an awesome I was listening to some analysis about outer space and the galaxies, and the best they can figure now is that they don't know where the edge of it is. It just keeps going and going and going. With all the technology and all the rockets and all the spaceships and all the satellites and all the telescopes and everything, all the data they have, they don't know where the edge of the galaxy is because it just goes from one galaxy to the next galaxy to the next galaxy to the next. And there's just out there. And all the stars that are out there are similar um, center of a, a galaxy like we have. And there's so many, you can't count them all on a clear night. Amen. God is in control. God is awesome. That's why we don't have to worry. And so Elijah, Elisha sat in his house. He said, lock the door. Don't let him in. Let's talk to him. And then verse chapter 7, the next verse Verse number one, he said, Hear ye the word of the Lord, for thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time ye shall, ye sh this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gates of Samaria. Then a Lord in whose hand the king leaned upon answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? said, there's no way that God can do this. And Elisha said, behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but thou shalt not eat thereof. Remember, we just talked about that they were selling doves dung. Okay, can I just say it bluntly? Dung, doves, poop. And they were paying good money for feces. They were desperate. This was a bad situation. Everybody was in survival mode. They were eating children. And Elisha said, hear the word of the Lord. Help's on the way. God knows where you're at. In fact, God's the one that put you here right now. And God's going to change the situation so you can relax there's no way. There's no way. How many times have people thought, there's no way, God. There's no way. There's no way you're going to get me out of this. There's no way you're going to change this. There's no way that you're going to get any glory out of this. This is too bad of a situation. There is no way, my friend. There is always a way. I've come here tonight to preach to you. You need to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. God knows where you're at. He knows what's going on. He sees your circumstance. He understands your situation. And God has not forsaken you. God has not left you. Amen. You're not by yourself. You are not alone. And you're not forgotten about God. God is going to help you. And so just keep walking with him. Keep your eyes on him. And keep your ears tuned to hear the word of the Lord. Whatever trouble that God has allowed in your life, God's not sent it to destroy you. Because if God wanted to destroy us, he would just wipe us out. But God has sent it to test us and to purify us. I referenced James before, amen, that we don't have to worry about things because God allows fiery trials to come into our lives. And he says, don't think it's strange. Amen, it's God's way to purify us, to get the impurities out. He allows us to go through difficulties. He allows us to have opposition. There are things that come, amen, that we have resistance, that we have to push through, amen. And the violent take it by force. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent push back. Amen. The saints of God keep going. Amen. We remain faithful. Amen. When we've done all to stand, what do we do? We stand. Amen. We don't give up any ground. Amen. We're not going to stop. We're not going to give up. We're in this for the long haul. 
God knows where I'm at, and I'm going to stand here until he gives me the answer that I need. Not necessarily the answer that I want. Many times we pray for that, don't we? But I'm going to wait for the answer that I need. God is trying to get our attention to help us to refocus on him, on his ability, on his strength, because he's able not only to supply our needs, but God says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. He gives us our wants. He takes us through the trouble and the test. He helps us to navigate the landmines that are out there. God restores our soul. He leads us into the paths of righteousness for his namesake. I believe Joel put it like this in Joel chapter 2, verse 23. He said, be glad there. And be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and will cause to come down to you the rain, the former and the latter rain in the first month. He said, God's going to give you what you need. He's just going to pour it out upon you. And verse 24, and the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. We blamed the devil for that, didn't we? We're going through that dry spell. Nothing was working. And we tried, and it seemed like the harder I tried, the worse I got. I got. Amen, and I wasn't making any progress, and I was getting more frustrated, and I couldn't understand why, why is the, my labor and my efforts not doing anything. And God had allowed some things to come in and take away the harvest. Amen, God had allowed some things to come in and stop me in my tracks. Amen, God wanted me to refocus, and then God says, you know what? When I start pouring out the rain, I'm gonna give you back all the things you lost before. Amen, so keep walking with God. Keep being faithful. Amen, it might be a dry season right now, and you might not understand. You're not making any progress. Amen. But God knows where you're at. And so be faithful to him and walk with him and let God restore some things. I feel our God is about ready to restore some things. Some of you have been going through a real tough season. Amen. We've been going through a dry season. We've been going through some difficult things in our life. Amen. But I'm glad that God has promised that he's going to restore the things that we've lost over the years. He's going to give us back more, amen, than we've ever had before. He's an almighty God, and I'm so grateful, amen, that he is in control and that he is on the throne. Amen. That's the God we serve. In verse 26, it says, You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God, which has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. God said, I know where you're at. I know what's going on. Please hear the word of the Lord tonight. Don't you say, oh, that was a really nice sermon, Pastor. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go struggle next week. But take it to heart. Claim the promises of God. Because in the midst of the trouble, and you know this story probably pretty well, God used the most unlikely candidates to win the victory. The Bible says in verse 3, there were four leprous men, four lepers, who were outside the camp where they had to be. They couldn't be with their own people. They had their own little area they lived. They were, affected. they were feeling the effects just like everyone inside the city. The army was surrounding them. And these four men said this. Why sit we here until we die? It's bad. It's terrible. We're going to die if we don't get some food. Let's do something.
still you hear the Lord speaking? Let's do something. Let's get involved. Let's try something. Why are we just going to sit around? I mean, I guess we can share more Facebook posts and, and find out what somebody else had for breakfast and, and play a few more games. And Where's that going to get us? Now we can get up and try something. We can do what I preached about this morning. Share your testimony. Be that witness that God has called you to be. Plant that seed. Allow God to use you. Pray with that individual at work. Amen. Let the light of the gospel shine through you. Be what the Lord said. Like you're a candle that's set on a hill. Amen. That you are, I mean, city set on a hill, a candle on a candlestick that everyone can see. Amen. The light of God reflects through you to them. Amen. Be that beacon in this dark world today. They said, why do we sit in here until we die? For if we say we will enter into the city, there's famine in the city. We're not going to get anywhere there. And we shall die. Or if we sit here, we die also. They, they've got pretty good logic. It's bad in there. It's bad here. So let's go and let's fall into the host of the Syrians because they've got food. And if they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Looks like we got four options. We can go in there and die. We can stay here and die. We can go out there, they'll kill us and we'll die. Or maybe they'll be merciful to us and give us the food, we'll live. Looks like we got a 25% chance. It's not the best of odds, but let's take it. And these four men get up and they do something. The Bible says, verse 5, and they rose up in the twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. And, there, and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp, behold, there was no man there. There was no one in the camp. For the Lord made the hosts of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses from the footsteps of these four men. God amplified the sound of the footsteps of four lepers. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel is hired against us, the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians, to come unto us. Wherefore, they arose and fled in the twilight, and they left their tents and their horses and their asses, even at the camp as it was, and they fled for their lives. They just ran. And when the lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and they did eat and drink. And they carried thence silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it. And came again, entered into another tent. And they carried thence also and went and hid it. And then they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings. And we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light and some mischief come upon us, now therefore come, let us go and let's tell the king's household. I know it's almost dark. I know that it's nighttime coming up, but we need to go back to the king and we need to let him know, hey, there's nobody out here anymore. The enemy's gone. God has done a great work. And so they go back and they tell the king. Now they're slow to believe it, but when the word finally gets out that yes, it's true, the Bible says that they flooded out of the gate of the city. And so the man that said, this, there's no way, even if God opens the windows of heaven, amen, he was at the gate and he was trampled that day. He saw the miracle, but he didn't get to take one taste of it. Amen, God knows what he's doing and God is in the business, amen, today of helping us. Amen, don't worry, don't fret, don't be afraid. Amen, hear the word of God because help is always on the way. Amen, if you're going through a test and a trial, amen, God's allowed you to go through it. Amen, so just learn from it. Amen, let God teach you and keep going. Let's keep being faithful to God. Let's keep walking with God, even if it's hard, even if you don't understand. Amen, just stand with God. Walk with God. Continue on with God. And let God use you like he's never used you 
before. Let God strengthen you. Let God help you. Let God stretch you a little bit, amen, with a little pressure so that you can find out what's on the inside and he can purify you. That's the God that we serve today. You come way too late to tell me that it's hopeless because help is on the way. I've heard from the Lord. His word tells us. His spirit tells us. He makes a way out of no way. He opens the spigots of heaven in the desert, and the desert blooms forth. That's the God that we serve. And that's the God that wants to use your life today. And he wants to help you. He wants to bless your family. He wants you to walk faithfully with him. He wants to use you as his vessel. So hear what God is saying. The struggles that you've been going through, God knows where you're at. And he's going to help you. The battles that you've been fighting, they're almost over. So let God help you to win the victory. Learn the lessons that God wants you to learn and grow in him. Because God is waiting for us to mature in his kingdom. If our musicians and singers will come back, I'm almost done. Paul says it like this in Ephesians chapter 3, in verse number 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, to him be glory now and forever. To him be that glory. God can do exceeding. You know, if he just said abundantly, that would have been great. But he said exceeding, abundantly, above. What can you think about? What's your, how, how good's your imagination? You can't outthink God. You can't outimagine God. God knows what you need. He knows where you are. And the Bible says as his power works in us, He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. That's our God. So hear the word tonight. Hear the word of the Lord. He's your shepherd. He's guiding us in the green pastures. He's leading us beside still waters. He's restoring our soul. He leads us in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm not going to be afraid because God's with us. God knows where you're at. He knows what's going on. 2 Kings 7, verse 16. And the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians, so that a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Please hear God's word. God just spoke to us a little while ago in tongues and interpretations. Just reminding us, hey, I know where you're at. I know what's going on. And if you'll follow me, if you'll listen to me, I will guide you and direct you and give you everything that you need. Let's stand together. God fulfills his word. You don't have to worry. 
You just need to walk faithfully with him today. This altar is open. We invite you to come right now. Some of you have been going through some serious, serious trials. My friend, it can go either way. You can keep walking with God and grow, or you can slide back and walk away. It's up to you. It's not God's will that you go the wrong direction. God didn't put that in your life to destroy you. But he does every once in a while puts a squeeze on us. He allows circumstances in life to come and to test us and to try us. Disappointments come. Relationships might change. But he hasn't forsaken you. He hasn't abandoned you. You're not alone. You're not by yourself. So hear the word of the Lord today. Because your help is on the way. God's helping you. God's ministering to you. God's with you. So let's come. Let's present ourselves as living sacrifices. Let's be holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Say, God, use my life. God, wherever you want to lead me, God, that's where I want to go. Whatever you need to do, God, change me and make me more like you. Work on my attitude, God. Help me, Lord, with my convictions. Help me, Lord Jesus, with my daily habits, my thought processes, my paradigms. Let them be pleasing unto you. And God, you lead on. Use my life. Because I want to give glory to you, and I want to benefit the kingdom like I've never had before. In Jesus' name, let's pray. They're going to sing. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord's moving right now. The Lord's moving in our midst.